The process of bacterial DNA replication involves a number of proteins coming together in a complex machine. DNA replication begins at a single defined DNA sequence of 245 base pairs called ORIC. A protein called DNA A increases in concentration as a cell grows and gets ready for cell division. This protein, as a complex with ATP, controls the onset of initiation by binding to specific nine base pair repeats at ORIC. The binding distorts the DNA, leading to the opening of adjacent 13 base pair repeats in the DNA. The opening in the DNA allows protein complexes to enter the replication bubble and bind to the single-stranded DNA. Each complex consists of a DNA helicase, also called DNA B, and a DNA helicase loader, also called DNA C. The DNA helicase loaders open the DNA helicase protein rings and place the rings around the single-stranded DNA. The loaders are then released. The helicases use energy from ATP hydrolysis to unwind the DNA helix at each of the two replication forks. Each DNA helicase recruits an enzyme called DNA primase, which synthesizes an RNA primer on the DNA template. An RNA primer has on its end a 3' hydroxyl group, which is required as a starting point for DNA polymerase to add DNA nucleotides. The main replication polymerase in E. coli is called DNA polymerase 3. DNA polymerase 3 complexes are ferried to the replication forks by protein complexes called clamp loaders. Clamp loaders also carry other protein complexes called sliding clamps. The clamp loader places the sliding clamp onto the DNA. It then places an attached DNA polymerase 3 complex next to the sliding clamp. The sliding clamp holds the DNA polymerase in position on the 3' prime end of the growing strand as the polymerase synthesizes new DNA. Nucleotides with complementary bases to the template strand are added one by one in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. The synthesis of DNA in the direction of the fork occurs continuously to the end of the template. This new strand is called the leading strand. In contrast, the other new strand, called the lagging strand, is built in fragments called Okazaki fragments. A simplified diagram shows the key differences in the leading and lagging strands. Note that the template strands are anti-parallel, with their 3' prime and 5' prime ends oriented in opposite directions. Because DNA polymerase can add nucleotides only in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, the leading strand grows continuously in the direction of the replication fork, but the lagging strand can grow only in short segments as the parental DNA molecule unzips. Many proteins participate in DNA replication, including those called single-strand DNA binding proteins, which quickly code exposed single-stranded regions of DNA and protect the single-stranded DNA from attack by nucleases. Although single-stranded DNA binding proteins are present throughout replication, for simplicity, we will omit them in the rest of the process. DNA replication continues as the DNA polymerase on the lagging strand meets the 5' prime end of the next primer, causing the polymerase and the sliding clamp to disengage. After DNA helicase has moved approximately 1,000 bases, a second RNA primer is synthesized at the fork. The sliding clamp loader adds a new sliding clamp to the primer and then adds the DNA polymerase to begin synthesis on a new Okazaki fragment. The cycle continues for the length of the template strands. Note that the lagging strand now consists of Okazaki fragments with a segment of RNA at one end. The RNA is cleaved by an enzyme called RNase H. Another enzyme called DNA polymerase 1 uses the 3' OH group of the adjacent Okazaki fragment 
to fill in the large gap with DNA nucleotides. Finally, an enzyme called DNA ligase closes the remaining nicks on the DNA, leaving a continuous DNA molecule. In this way, an E. coli chromosome is replicated at two replication forks, all the way around the circular molecule.